Good morning, everyone. I am your Monday host, Catherine Farrell, and we're coming to you live from the Derfner Judaica Museum here at the Hebrew Home. And this is Good Morning Hebrew Home. Uh, today is Monday, September 28th, and the time is 1031. It is also Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. So our show will be brief, uh, and let's get right into it. We'll get started with the weather. Uh, today, as you can maybe see already outside the window, it's going to be cloudy with a slight chance of showers, and the high is 77. So we're still with those uh, summer-like temperatures, but just a little bit more of a, a cloudy day. Um, in this day in history, so there's a lot of baseball things that happen in September. We'll have to remember that for, for next year, <laughs> maybe to study up on some baseball stuff. So anyway. <laughs> Oh, it's the World Series is in um, September, so I think that's maybe why. But on September 28th in 1941, the Boston Red Sox, Ted Williams, plays a doubleheader against the Philadelphia Athletics on the last day of the regular season and gets six hits and eight trips to the plate to boost his batting average to .406 and become the first player since Bill Terry in 1930 to hit .400. Williams, who spent his entire career with the Sox, played his final game exactly 19 years later on September 28, 1960 at Boston's Fenway Park and hit a home run in his last time at bat for a career total of 521 home runs. That's a lot of home runs. <laughs> um, if anyone's ever uh, been to Boston's Fenway Park, it is uh, quite an experience. I really enjoyed that, um, that venue, although I didn't go there for a baseball game. Uh, I went there for concerts. So moving on, in 1987, Star Trek, The Next Generation, starring Patrick Stewart, debuts on syndicated TV. And in 2015, Trevor Noah succeeds Jon Stewart as host of The Daily Show. Uh, our today, we have a bunch of national days today. Uh, today is National Drink Beer Day, National Good Neighbor Day, which used to be the fourth Sunday, but it is the 28th, National Strawberry Cream Pie Day. I didn't even know there was such a thing as strawberry cream pie. Uh, National North Carolina Day and National Family Day. So anyone who may be observing Yom Kippur, maybe you want to hold off on the beer and the strawberry cream pie um, and just celebrate National Family Day. Celebrating our birthdays today at the Hebrew home, our residents celebrating birthdays are Claire G and Marie W. Happy birthday. And staff celebrating birthdays are Angela E and Jacqueline T in nursing and Anna P in housekeeping. Happy birthday, everyone. Uh, you all share birthdays with celebrities such as Hilary Duff, Mira Servino, and Janine Garofalo. So happy birthday. Those are all wonderful women, uh, comedians, actresses, um, really great, <clears throat> really great women out there to be celebrating your birthdays with. So on to my favorite subject, and we were just talking about food before the show started, uh, lunch. The lunch today um, will be meatloaf with mushroom gravy, peas, and mashed potato, and the dessert, fresh grapes. For dinner tonight, uh, mushroom barley soup and fresh croquettes, stewed tomatoes as the entree, and pound cake for dessert. I do love pound cake too. So our last segment for today, positive news story, and this is one that's really um, exciting for me. Uh, New Zealand Prime Minister pledges to reach 100% renewable energy across the nation by 2030. Uh, since Jacinda Ardern became New Zealand's Prime Minister in 2017, she's emerged as one of the world's climate leaders. Government initiatives over the past few years have included planting 100 million trees a year banning all future offshore oil exploration and placing a cap on the use of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer in a bid to protect fresh water from agricultural pollution. 
Now, the Labour Party has pledged that if elected in the upcoming October 17 elections, all energy generation in the country will be 100% renewable by 2030. That's really exciting. This ups a previous target of phasing out all non-renewable energy by 2035, so five years sooner. According to a party statement, the pledge involves accelerating the electrification of the transport and industrial sectors and investing in emerging technologies such as green hydrogen while continuing to make energy affordable new to New Zealanders. The COVID-19 economic recovery represents a once in a generation opportunity to reshape New Zealand's energy system to be more renewable faster, affordable and secure, said Ardern. Investment in renewable energy is also jobs rich. Our plan will be creating new jobs and develop the high skill workforce our future economy needs to thrive. Labor Energy spokesperson Megan Woods added, New Zealand produces 84% of its electricity from renewable sources now, but we can do better. We will stop activities that increase our emissions by, for example, banning new thermal baseload generation and promote clean energy development. Our plan for clean energy and lower carbon emissions will help us seize the economic opportunities of being the clean, green country that New, Ze New Zealanders see ourselves as being and that we can market ourselves as. The government also sees further investment in clean energy as being a means of reducing the country's reliance on imported energy. We can produce some of the cleanest green hydrogen in the world explained Woods, and potentially receive a premium for it in international markets. If New Zealand's Labour Party wins the national election and meets its promises, the country could soon join Iceland and Paraguay in the list of nations that rely on 100% renewable resources for energy. Costa Rica is also an impressive green state, 99% uh, of its energy coming from green sources. So we'll be sure to share more with you all here on Good Morning Hebrew Home, uh, news about New Zealand and around the globe as soon as it comes in. So that's actually our show for today. Remember to tune in to Channel 8. We have What's the Story with Kate at 11.15, Exercise with Deborah at 1.30, and on our streaming channel 88, which many of you I'm sure are already watching, uh, we have the following Yom Kippur program scheduled for today. So. Sermon and Yizkor at 10.45, Musaf at 11, Minka at 2, and Nila at 6.30. So the fast ends tonight at 7.22 with the blowing of shofar. After that, we'll be streaming our Hebrew Home University show at 7.30, also on Channel 88, and that's with Professor Gil Harrell. Uh, and don't forget, you can catch this episode of Good Morning Hebrew Home on YouTube. We will not be streaming it again tonight at 6.30 as we usually do due to the other programming we have in place. So joining us tomorrow morning for another great show, same time, same place. Uh, once again, I'm your host, Catherine Farrell, and this is Good Morning Hebrew Home. I'm going to leave you with an inspirational quote from Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Magic is believing in yourself. If you can make that happen, you can make anything happen. Have a great day, everyone.